All right, let's get started with prospecting so that you can grow your brand and your business. So when you want to get started with prospecting, the first thing that you'll want to look at are your referrals, your networks, website visitors, and any purchase list that you have. So these referrals could be sent to you by your existing contacts or maybe some new people that you've met on LinkedIn, prior customers, new customers, networking events. Uh, these are basically any leads that are sent to you by your existing or new contacts. Networks, these are people that you've met online and offline at events while you've been out and about throughout your city. Um, if you've been doing webinars online and communicating with people through social media, uh, maybe in different groups such as LinkedIn or Facebook, really establishing networks beyond uh, those that you're able to just reach in person. And of course, website visitors. So any of the people who have subscribed to your website, if you're using any type of system such as retargeting or remarketing for those who have visited your site already, lists can be compiled from that. Your email marketing list could be a result of website visitors as well as sales funnels that you've ran through targeted ads and then any purchase list that you've bought from a data source. So really start designing your list for prospecting. And after you design that list, you want to design a sales story. So really you want to ask the right questions that discover if the person that you're reaching out to is a good fit for you and vice versa. So as you're developing this sales story, it's going to involve your ability to ask effective questions to really get to the root of their issue and understand if you have what they need to guide them through their particular problem and provide a solution. So here are some sample questions to ask. Ask what their experience has been if they ever purchased this type of offering before. What is the goal for them and their business? Who's involved in making the decisions and what options have they evaluated in the past? You really wanna help them work through who their ideal audience is and who would be impacted the most by them providing their particular product or service? What problems are they facing right now? And what are the timely or relevant issues that are really going on with them that are um, top of the list as far as addressing in order to move those issues out of the way so that they can move forward? And what resources can they combine with what they have for a more maximized impact? And what's going to happen if they don't invest in your services or product to help make that change. And more importantly, if they do, what does success look like? What does that transformation really look like from their perspective? These are just a few questions to help mold your conversation so that it stays structured. In the beginning, it's great to have small talk depending on the individual. And as you get to understand and, and, and learn more about them through the course of conversation, you'll realize whether or not you just want to get to the point or if it's going to be more of a lengthy conversation, but adjust your style to accommodate who you're speaking with so that you can be mindful of their time and your own, and yet also mindful of their needs from a conversational perspective. You wanna set goals and numbers too. So when you look at your profitability model, how many prospects do you need to reach out to on a weekly and a monthly basis? and start examining your acceptance rates. Most importantly, do not be discouraged by rejection. You're going to get a lot of rejection out here. It just continues to take trial and error. You have to continue to move forward, reach out to as many of those in your target audience as you can, because if you sit back and get defeated by being discouraged, you will not be able to take advantage of additional potential leads and opportunities that are out there in the marketplace. So. When you're feeling discouraged, take a deep breath, hang in there because prospecting takes work. So let's talk about LinkedIn outreach. This is just one of the platforms that has become increasingly popular right now. Initially, it was one of the least saturated platforms, but with a lot of people at home now and a lot of individuals doing consulting work on the side, inboxes are just lighting up. Um, whether it be through inbox ads or just direct cold inboxing. So let's talk about some parameters around how to effectively uh, perform outreach on LinkedIn. Make it genuine, so no copy and paste. There's nothing 
more insulting than a message that has been copied and pasted, let alone with an inaccurate name. Another thing that you'll want to do is make sure that you've looked at the individual's profile. You may both actually offer the same thing, so you wouldn't want to approach your message stating, what is it that you do? I'd like to help you with whatever my services or product XYZ. You can use filters within LinkedIn to find individual leads that align with your target audience. But really as you find them and you're looking at their profiles and, and evaluating what they're all about, try to find opportunities within that profile that demonstrate where some of their pain points might be. If they've listed their website on their profile, visit their profile in their website and learn more about their offerings so that you know where you can fit in. But most importantly, when you're reaching out to them, open the conversation with questions. Do not open the conversation with whatever it is your offering is. Let them know that you clearly understand what they do and what they offer. Ask questions about what's going on in their business, what could be improved, what resources they may be looking for, what type of hurdles they're trying to overcome. And as you converse back and forth, after they ask what it is that you're offering, then you can get to whatever it is that you have to offer. So cold calling is another option that many do not like. It's a lot easier to kind of hide behind a keyboard now, especially with social media platforms and email marketing, but cold calling does still work. When you really set it up for cold calling, if you're setting it up online initially, ask for the call first. If you immediately have access to someone's number that you have never spoken with before, it's going to catch them off guard, especially if you haven't made an appointment to just call them at your convenience when they may not even be in the mood to have a conversation with you about whatever it is that you have to offer. So as you're communicating on these online platforms and through email marketing, offer the opportunity for them to book an appointment with you at their convenience. There's a tool called Calendly dot com. There's also an app for your phone where you can carve out times based off of your calendar to show when you're available so that these individuals can select a time to speak with you that really works best for them. This will help them be more engaged in the conversation if you haven't caught them while they're trying to cook dinner, finish their work, and a load of laundry at the same time. So 80% of your call should really be about them. It should be asking them about their needs, the problems that they're facing. But ultimately, if you can, ask for that first call. And follow a consistent schedule. So if you call 10 people a week and you only get one client out of it, you're lucky. It, it may take 100 types of outreach between calling, social media, email, etc. But make sure that you hold yourself accountable to carving out a schedule for outreach. And when you do, you wanna provide great solutions. So once you really have a clear understanding of what that person's problem is, ask if they'd be open to you offering a few solutions for free. This really demonstrates your value as a subject matter expert and thought leader. And it also shows that you care. They don't want to just get on the phone and hear a pitch or a sales presentation. Have some things readily available that are great and solve problems so that they can see you're a problem solver out the gate. They don't wanna hear you just talk about yourself. They wanna talk about their issues and they wanna hear what you have to offer. And you have to get the word out there. So stay in top of, your, top of mind with your audience really involves you sharing content that your audience can use on a consistent basis. That's how you bring prospects to you. The more you can communicate about the problems that they're having and how they can be solved, they're going to come looking for you. They're going to refer you to other people. They're going to share your articles. They will share your resources. They will tell a friend because you're presenting yourself to be a value and a thought leader in your space to stay top of mind. And you have to nurture relationships. So I hear so many different examples of cold calling, cold inboxing, whatever you want to call it, where 
they say, oh, you just asked for the date right away, or you asked to get married right away, and there's no courtship. You have to court your prospects. You have to nurture the relationships. And though it's time consuming, it's still a matter of quality over quantity. So you don't want to be a pest online or offline. You want to check in with your leads after you've spoken with them just to see how they're progressing and offer your help and your support. If you sent a proposal out, you haven't heard back in about 48 hours, just check back in, see if they have any questions. If it's been two weeks after the call and a, and a proposal wasn't issued, follow up again. Ultimately, you really want to find a delicate balance of outreach and, and ask the person that you're speaking with, honestly, what is a realistic time frame for you to communicate with them so that you're not being overbearing, but you're letting them know that you're there to offer your support. There are so many variables that come into play right now from working from home, available resources, um, disposable income. These are all things that we have to be understanding and empathetic towards and show that we're here for the long haul as consultants and we're ready when they're ready to make the decision. And in the meantime, especially if they've been brought into your sales funnel and or email marketing list, you should be sharing information with them regularly at least once a week to stay top of mind. And then cross share content with your network. So when you have people in your network that are trusted, especially those on LinkedIn, ask for them to share your posts if it makes sense for their audience as well. And do it for them too. It's important that your audiences ultimately are benefiting from this information and that it's not spammy or self-promoting to a certain extent. You really want this information to be valuable for the recipients of it. And you can also ask your network for potential leads um, and referrals to really add credibility behind your outreach efforts. So people really like to buy from people that they can trust and introductions add an additional layer of trust. So let's talk about leveraging the power of Twitter. We've talked a lot about LinkedIn, but pay attention to Twitter conversations by tracking the tweets in your local area. When you spark genuine conversations with someone on Twitter and you're offering something that they can use, it really makes the conversation a lot more mutually beneficial. So don't forget about Twitter. It is very uh, busy and the messages move very quickly. However, it is an opportunity for you to actually search for conversations that are taking place so that you can be that guide or lead or solution provider. And you gotta make it easy for people to find you. So this means having a clean and professional website making sure that all your social media information is updated and accurate, get a nice, clean, consistent look across your platforms, make sure all your contact information is available, your email address, your phone number, your website. And if you haven't bought a domain for your own name as a consultant, even if you operate under the business name of your consultancy, you should still purchase your own domain and set up a web page, even if it's just a landing page about yourself, so that if an individual goes searching to find information about you, of course they will find your professionally placed LinkedIn profile, but if they can get more insight and perspective about who you are outside of just your work history, volunteer activities, and groups that you may be a part of, it's a great way for individuals to get to know you more on their own time before they reach out to you. By the time someone has looked at your website and or your LinkedIn profile, if they have taken the initiative to set up a call with you, they're somewhat sold. They're just looking for you to prove that you can solve their problem to seal the deal. Now that you've learned more about how to prospect effectively, we hope that you look forward to the remainder of the trainings in this training module. If you have any questions, visit moderncreative.com, email info at moderncreative.com and set up your own Calendly appointment to go into more depth around developing your specific prospecting strategy. Thank you.